11th problem we have 1.6 grams of pyrolusite ore which was treated with 50 ml one normal oxalic acid and some sulfuric acid the volume of the oxalic acid left undecomposed was made up to 250 ml 25 ml of this solution when treated with 0.1 normal KMnO4 solution required 32 ml of it then you have been asked to find the weight percentage of pure MnO2 right now you can see here that the pyrolusite ore pyrolusite ore is an ore of uh, the manganese the compound is MnO2 now we have taken 1.6 gram of such MnO2 which was added some oxalic acid i mean to say one normal of oxalic acid in presence of H2SO4 sulfuric acid is acting only as the acidic medium here and you had been given the volume of uh, oxalic acid as well that is 50 ml now this solution the volume of oxalic acid left undecomposed i mean to say that in acidic medium no matter what is the oxidation state of manganese would change to plus 2 and uh, here oxalic acid where the oxidation state of carbon is plus 3 would be changing to plus 4 i mean this is oxidizing agent reacting with a reductant or reducing agent here leading to the formation of carbon dioxide and mn plus 2 now after knowing this we should see here that there is some oxalic acid is left undecomposed that means we have taken here the excess amount of the oxalic acid we have taken excess that is the reason why some oxalic acid is remaining i mean to say here this mno2 substance is reacting or acting as the limiting reagent now it is given to find the excess of oxalic acid that is remaining in the solution you have back titrated remember my dear students when the substance which is added in the first reaction remains when you try to find out its amount by doing titration once again you call it as back titration and you could see here that this was made up to 250 ml and 25 ml of this remaining oxalic acid was back titrated with 0.1 normal 32 ml of kmno4 once again here manganese anyways the acidic conditions are there manganese will change its oxidation state to plus 2 and here the a product formed from the carbon is plus 4 that is nothing but carbon dioxide so what i mean to say here when we say that the equivalence or gram equivalence of kmno4 which is equal to normality into volume in liter which have reacted with the oxalic acid remaining i can write here this could be equal to the oxalic acid remaining but these equivalents are present in 25 ml so here when you find out the equivalence of kmn4 are nothing but the equivalence of oxalic acid but in 25 ml the original solution is in 250 ml so in order to find out the equivalence of this oxalic acid which are initially present in 250 ml you have to equate that with the kmn4 along with that you have to multiply this with 10 so that you can get this multiplication factor you can see that these are the equivalents which are present in 25 ml hence i am finding out the equivalence in 250 ml just by multiplying with 10 now these are the equivalents of oxalic acid that are remaining after the first reaction and you had been given the equivalents of oxalic acid which are being initially taken as 1 into 50 into 10 to the power minus 3 that is normality into volume in liter volume is given in milliliter i am dividing with 1000 so here you can see my dear students that this is 32 into 10 to the power minus 3 these are the equivalents of sulfuric acid remaining these are the equivalents of oxalic acid sorry oxalic acid remaining these are the equivalents of oxalic acid which are initially taken therefore the oxalic acid equivalents that have reacted with pyrolusite are nothing but the equivalents of pyrolusite as per the law of chemical equivalence whenever two substances react their gram equivalents are equal so initially this many equivalents are present these are the equivalent that are remaining so the difference in equivalents of oxalic acid has reacted with mno2 hence equal to the equivalents of mno2 is nothing but 50 minus 32 that is 18 into 10 to the power minus 3 so when i write gram equivalents i'll mention it as weight upon equivalent weight that is gram molecular weight divided by n factor of mno2 which is changing from plus 4 to plus 2 
So, from here you will be finding out the weight of MnO2 in the sample. You can see there is only one unknown that is nothing but the weight of MnO2. Therefore, you have been asked to find out the percentage of MnO2 in the pyrolusite sample which is equal to weight of MnO2 divided by the total weight of the sample is 1.6 gram multiplied by 100. Now, when you simplify this by substituting the weight of MnO2, you will be getting it as approximately 49 percent by weight of MnO2 present. In the next question, equal weights of mercury and iodine are allowed to react completely to form a mixture of mercurous and mercuric iodide. Then you have to find out the weight ratio of the mercurous and mercuric iodide that are formed during this reaction. So, in this case, you have been given the mercury and iodine reacting in equal weights. You know that initially you will be getting mercurous iodide which will subsequently react with iodine present in excess or remaining in the first reaction to give you mercuric iodide. As we are aware of the fact that mercury changing its oxidation state initially to plus 1, from there it is changing to plus 2 because these are the oxidizing agents. Halogens are the oxidizing agent which are oxidizing initially the mercury from 0 to plus 1 and then from plus 1 to plus 2. Some students get confused here how to write the products. Here the logic is very simple, it is a simple redox reaction and we will acquire initially the lower oxidation state and we will be reaching the upper then. Now, you had been given the information that you have taken the equal weights of these two. Suppose I have taken x grams of mercury and x grams of iodine and now since we are going to use the mole concept, I am going to balance this equation first. You can see there are two mercury over that side, you have to multiply by factor 2 whereas here the total mercury that is involved on the product side is only 1 hence it has to be multiplied by 2 and now you can see that the total number of iodines that are involved in this reaction are balanced in either cases. So, here after balancing the equation I will convert the weight into the moles by dividing with the atomic or molecular weights respectively. You know that the atomic weight of mercury is 201 approximately and that of I is 127 and writing the molecular weight 127 into 2. Now, these are the what you call number of moles of these two substances that are involved. Now, we can see iodine is subsequently reacting in the second reaction. Hence, we can assume that this is acting as a limiting reagent. That means, this is excess reagent that is remaining. That is the reason why it is reacting. Otherwise, you have the standard methods to determine which one is the limiting reagent. right? Now, here I am assuming this as the limiting reagent and for every 2 moles of mercury, I am getting only 1 mole of this mercurous iodide. Hence, for every x by 201, I can expect the formation of half of it. That is x by 402 gram moles of mercurous iodide is formed in this reaction. Now, let us check out how much of I2 has reacted. For every 2 moles, once again 1 mole of I2 only has reacted. For every x by 201, as you all know, x by 402 gram moles of I2 will react and the gram moles of I2 that are remaining are initial moles which are x by 254 which are taken and x by 402 moles of this I2 has reacted from this mole ratio 2 is to 1 for every x by 201 x by 402. Now, these amounts are ready. Now, you can see my dear student these amounts are ready to react. I mean to say x by 254 and minus x by 402 amount of iodine and x by 402 amount of mercurous iodide are ready to react subsequently in the second reaction. Now, we have to once again check which one is the limiting reagent as here I can see clearly that this consumed is lesser than this hence I am assuming this as the limiting reagent. For every 1 mole I am getting 2 moles of mercuric iodide for every this much I will be getting the double of it that is this much. For every 1 mole, 1 mole of mercurous iodide has reacted for every x by 254 minus x by 402. I will be reacting the same amount of mercurous iodide. So, when I subtract the initial and reactor, I will be getting the remaining moles of the mercury. I mean to say the number of moles of sorry mercurous iodide that are finally remaining are this much after the second reaction and the number of moles of mercuric iodide that are finally formed are this many after the second reaction. Now, we all know that number of moles is equal to weight by molecular weight. Now, therefore, 
the weight ratio of mercurous iodide and mercuric iodide in terms of x can be obtained now by simplifying this expression we can get the value of this ratio i mean to say by simplification of this we will be getting this ratio as 0.513 is to 1 or approximately 2 is to 1 we have 1000 ml of oxygen at ntp which were passed through a nose nozer and the resulting volume is triple eight ml this quantity of ozonized oxygen was then passed through excess of potassium iodide then you have been asked to find the weight of iodine that is liberated so here there are two concepts that are involved one is related to the simple eudiometry that means the analysis of the gas the second one is the iodometry i mean there is conversion of oxygen to ozone which is involved in the first reaction but you can see here clearly that the entire conversion of oxygen to ozone is not possible since ozone is not stable at room temperature. Hence, I am taking the equilibrium situation arising here. I have taken here 1000 ml of oxygen initially. When this is sent through the ozonizer, I will assume some x moles of oxygen has reacted or x milliliter of oxygen has reacted in this reaction at STP and you can see here for every 3 moles there are 2 moles of ozone that are produced for every 1 mole there are 2 by 3 moles for every x it will be 2x by 3 ml of ozone formed in this reaction. You can see once again we are using the gravimetry concepts for every x ml 3 is to 2 is the mole ratio or 1 is to 2 by 3 is the mole ratio for every x ml that has reacted from oxygen you can expect the formation of 2x by 3. This I could make out because in the question it is clearly mentioned that this gas mixture I mean to say oxygen and ozone both should remain after the end of this reaction. I mean it is also given that the sum of the volume of these two gases is triple eight ml. From here I will be finding out the value of x it is 336 milliliter after the simplification now we know the out of these two this is a better oxidizing agent now when this gas mixture is passed through ki there is only one chance that your ozone is going to react with ki as per this reaction to give you iodine ozone is a better oxidizing agent because of the presence of nascent oxygen and that is responsible for the oxidation of this potassium iodide into i2 and when you balance this equation you will be getting for every one mole of this ozone one mole of i2 is liberated when you simplify this re equation you will be getting such an expression where you will be getting two moles of kOH and i guess this equation is now balanced as well now you have been asked to find the weight of iodine which can be obtained through the number of moles of ozone now you see that number of moles of ozone which can be calculated as tp as volume of ozone divided by 22,400 milliliter. Now you can see from here over there volume of ozone is 2x by 3 that is 2 into we got the value of x. Now this upon simplification giving rise to 224 ml that is 224 divided by 22,400 that is 1 by 100 mole of oxygen has reacted in this reaction. And for every one mole you are getting one mole of iodine hence I will be expecting the formation of the same number of moles in case of I2 also which can be written as weight upon the molecular weight. Now when you simplify this you will be getting the weight of weight of I2 obtained is 2.54 gram. So answer for this question is 2.54 gram that is option A. Now we have 10 gram of a mixture of anhydrous nitrates of two metals A and B which are heated to constant weight and gave 5.531 gram of a mixture of the corresponding oxides. The equal weights of A and B respectively are 1 or 3.6 and 31.8 then you have been asked to find out the weight percentage of A in the mixture but not 
A NO3. I mean to say the nitrate of the mixture. What I mean to say that you have the nitrate of A as well as the nitrate of B. Here I am assuming that the valency of this A as X and that of B is Y. Then I am writing the entire compound as A NO3 taken X and B NO3 taken Y. Now this compound when subjected to heating is giving rise to the oxide. We do not know about the other component that are produced during this reaction but we are sure of the fact that the oxides are obtained and you had been given information regarding these two that this mixture is weighing 10 grams and the oxides are weighing 5.531 gram. Now when you are given a mixture and the mixture has certain weight now first we have to convert this in terms of x then the weight of this will be 10 minus x gram. Now you know that the gram equivalence of ANO3 taken x whenever we find the gram equivalence when the weight is given we divide the weight with the gram equivalent weight. I mean you have the gram equivalence of ANO3 taken x as or I will assume this time it has a gram and this will be 10 minus a because already we have assumed here it has x now let us take it as a gram. Now the gram equivalence of this ANO3 taken x is weight divided by equivalent weight of ANO3 taken x that is equivalent weight of a which is provided to us 103.6 plus equivalent weight of nitrate ion that is the molecular weight or formula weight divided by its valency 62 divided by NO3 minus hence I am writing 1 as the n factor here. Now these are the gram equivalents of ANO3 taken x which are entirely changing into the A2OX hence their gram equivalents are equal and you are also given the gram equivalents of BNO3 taken Y weight upon the equivalent weight of B is given as 31.8 plus equivalent weight of nitrate ion is this much which are nothing but the equivalents of B2OY because you know that the gram equivalents of two substances reacting with each other or from from each other should be equal. Now when I write this as weight of A2OX or I am going to write this as weight of A2OX divided by equivalent weight of A2OX that is equivalent weight of A once again 103.6 plus equivalent weight of oxygen that is gram atomic weight by its valency and the gram equivalence of this thing as weight of B2OY divided by the gram equivalent weight of this plus the gram equivalent weight of oxygen. Now it is known that the sum of weight of OX plus weight of B2OI is given as 5.531 gram. Now when I multiply and simplify this I will be getting this over there I can simplify this 103.6 plus 8 divided by 103.6 plus 62 times of A this is the weight of A2OX plus the weight of B2OY you can see 31.8 plus 8 upon 31.8 plus 62 into 10 minus A this whole weight is given to us as 5.6 sorry 531 gram. Now from this expression we will find the value of A. After finding the value of A, the only unknown of this expression, you can see there is only one known, unknown that is nothing but A. After finding out the value of A, you can see here that we will be using that to find the percentage of A in the mixture because you know that A is present only in the first compound and you know that the gram equivalence of A and O3 taken X is equal to gram equivalence of A. Hence, I will be writing the gram equivalence that is weight of it by equivalent weight of it. These are the gram equivalents of this compound and nothing but the gram equivalents of this substance which is equal to weight of A divided by equivalent weight of A. Hence, weight of A is this many grams you got. You are substituting anyway the value of a here then you have been given the weight percentage of A in the mixture as weight of A upon the total weight of the mixture into 100 that is 103.6 A by 165.6 into 10 is going to be your final answer. So here you will be substituting the value of A 
to get your right answer and it is 32.28 percentage of a is found in the mixture we have a solution of hydrogen peroxide which is labeled as 20 volume which was left open for some time due to this some h2o2 decomposed and the volume strength of the solution is decreased to determine the new volume strength of h2o2 solution 10 ml of this solution was taken and it was diluted to 100 ml and this diluted solution then picked up 10 ml and this was finally titrated with kmno4 using 0 0.025 molar and 25 ml of the solution then you have been asked to find the volume strength of h2o2 now initially you have uh, the sample of h2o2 which is written as 20 volumes which was left open for some time then we got a new sample or decomposed sample of h2o2 its volume strength obviously will decrease because of the decomposition of h2o2 because you know that h2o2 is decomposing at room temperature itself to give you it's a disproportionation reaction you can see the change in oxidation state uh, from minus 1 to minus 2 that is the reduction as well as the oxidation now this decomposed we have taken 10 ml this was added water then we made it to 100 ml then this was picked 10 ml this solution diluted h2o2 was titrated with kmno4 which is given to us as 0 0.025 molar 25 milliliter of it now assuming that this reaction is taking place under acidic medium and the change in oxidation state anyways from plus 7 to plus 2 this is reduced hence o2 will be oxidized and subsequently finding out the n factor of this kmno4 over here as plus 7 to plus 2 is the change then the n factor is 5 now you'll be writing the gram equivalence of kmno4 in acidic medium have reacted with the h2o2 in 10 ml diluted solution now the gram equivalence of any two substances reacting are equal the gram equivalence of kmno4 as per this data is molarity when we multiply the molarity with the n factor we will be getting the normality to 25 divided by 1000 that is normality molarity into n factor into volume in liter volume in liter we got the equivalence of kmno4 which has reacted with the equivalence of h2o2 in dilute phase now we know that when the gram equivalence of h2o2 over here are this many the gram equivalence of this h2o2 in 100 ml will be 10 times of it I mean to say 0 0.0245 into 125 I am simplifying this divided by 100 I am multiplying this with 10 so that I can get the gram equivalence of this thing in 100 ml because I know that this is, these are in 10 ml hence to find out in 100 ml I am multiplying this with 10 where the 0 got cancelled and we got this information now we know that these are the gram equivalents of H2O2 which are present in 10 ml of original solution I mean to say this solution this solution have the equivalence equal suppose if I assume that the equivalence of H2O2 over here are E here it will be E as well because upon dilution the gram equivalence does not change whereas when you pick some amount from it it will become one tenth of it because you have picked up 10 ml of dilute solution from that I am repeating here the gram equivalence does not change or gram moles weight does not change upon dilution here if I if the gram equivalents are E here also it will be E but when you are picking up certain amount from it it will be reduced I mean to say here 100 ml has become 10 ml then accordingly the gram equivalents of H2O2 will be decreased and now these are the gram equivalents of H2O2 that are present in 10 ml original solution this is dilute this is original solution now after getting the gram equivalents of H2O2 in original solution you will be finding out the normality of H2O2 equal to gram equivalents of H2O2 divided by volume of the solution in liter when you divide the gram equivalents with the volume you will be getting the normality and you know finally that the volume strength of H2O2 solution is 5.6 times of normality of H2O2 hence when I multiply that entire value 
with 5.6 i'm going to get my answer i mean to say the volume strength of h2o2 finally is obtained as 17.136 volumes you can see here it has decreased and the answer for this question is 17.136 volumes we have 200 ml of a solution of a mixture of sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate which was first titrated with hcl using phenolphthalein as indicator and hcl required was 17.5 ml for this end point and after this some methyl orange was added and 2.5 ml of the same hcl was again required i mean to say the stock solution was required for the next end point i mean to say for the methyl orange end point and you have to find out the amounts of naoh and na2co3 in the mixture now we know that when you are adding since you have taken a mixture of sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate as far as the basic strength is concerned sodium hydroxide is a stronger base now when you are adding hcl in it the first reaction will be between these two where you will not be able to find or trace out any end point because the conjugate base of phenolphthalein because you know that this you have added along with the phenolphthalein which is going to react with it phenolphthalein is a weak organic acid it has reacted a pinch of it you have added it has reacted with the base mixture to get converted into this which is pink in color i mean to say you have the entire solution now in pink it is desperately waiting for the proton to come but naoh has not given it the opportunity to take the proton because it's a stronger base now when you are adding hcl again sodium carbonate is going to pick that because it is second best base and as soon as this gets converted into sodium bicarbonate along with nacl this ph e minus i mean to say the phenolphthalein conjugate base is going to pick the proton from it and quickly going to get converted into the colorless form of phenolphthalein and this lies the end point of phenolphthalein titration so at this point you can see that whatever equivalents gram equivalents of hcl that i have added have reacted with sodium hydroxide as well as sodium carbonate partially hence i will be writing the gram equivalents as because i have to find out the weight of each weight upon the n factor i mean to say the gram equivalent weight that is molecular weight upon n factor you can see here number of replaceable oh minus when have to be accounted for it is 1 plus the gram equivalents of na2co3 weight of na2co3 divided by equivalent weight that is molecular weight divided by here you have to guess the n factor of hcl which is nothing but 1 don't take it as 2 because the total charge is 2 here only one hcl has sorry only one h plus has been taken by sodium carbonate we have to take the n factor of this in sodium carbonate as 1 if two h plus are taken by this base then we will take the n factor as 2 but only partial neutralization is taking place we have to take the n factor as 1 which is equal to the normality of hcl which is uh, given as 1 normal and the volume of hcl which is used for the titration is 7.5 ml so when i multiply the normality with volume in liter i'll be getting the gram equivalents now these are the gram equivalents of hcl which have reacted for the phenolphthalein end point now what we did is we have added some methyl orange and we continued our titration we know that sodium carbonate is the only substance which is left over to react with the hcl and when you add this methyl orange over there it will quickly grab h2co3 yellow in color and we after grabbing this it will be converting it to conjugate base sorry conjugate acid which is red in color i'm going to say h2co3 is essential for the conversion or change of color of methyl orange so when this takes place i'm going to say this reaction takes place or the formation of h2co3 takes place we say that as the methyl orange end point and we note down the volume of hcl which has been added it is given in the problem as 2.5 ml now we know that the gram equivalents of hcl that we have used which is equal to the same stock solution which has been used exclusively only for sodium bicarbonate reaction and you can see initially we didn't take any sodium bicarbonate in our mixture so we have to see from where we have obtained the sodium bicarbonate so you can see clearly that sodium bicarbonate is obtained from sodium carbonate hence their gram equivalents are equal once again i'll be writing this as weight upon 
equivalent weight that is molecular weight upon n factor. So, now we have one more expression for the weight of Na2CO3. So, we have two equations one is pertaining to the weight of NaOH as well as Na2CO3. The second one is we have only the weight of Na2CO3 as the unknown. Now, simplification of these two equations or solving these two equations will fetch you the value of NaOH as well as I mean to say the weight of NaOH as well as Na2CO3 which are obtained as 0 0.06 gram and 0 0.027 gram of these two. The next question is again on double titration we have 50 ml of a solution containing 1 gram each sodium hydroxide, sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate and were titrated with one normal of HCl. You have been asked to find the titer readings, I mean to say the volume of HCl in each case. In the first case we have used only phenophthalene as the indicator, in the second one we have used only methyl orange as the indicator, in the third one we have taken methyl orange as well as I mean to say phenophthalene, but methyl orange was added after the phenophthalene end point. So, when you see here in the first case when you have added only phenophthalene as the indicator, you know only two bases that are present as I just discussed one is NaOH, the second one is sodium carbonate and you know only partly it, will, partly it will react because what we require is a replaceable hydrogen atom for the conjugate base of the phenophthalene. So, hence you will be writing this expression, these two have reacted with HCl. So, weight upon weight of NaOH is mentioned to us in the problem as 1 by equivalent weight that is molecular weight by n factor weight of Na2CO3 is also the same in factor once again here is only one because it has taken only one hydrogen to undergo partial reaction is equal to normality of HCl into volume in liter. So, this is your first titer reading when you use only phenophthalene. The second question is when you have used methyl orange after phenophthalene end point. So, after phenophthalene, you know that your solution has only NaHCO3, which is taken initially because initially also you have taken sodium bicarbonate and NaHCO3 is produced by the reaction of its sodium carbonate with HCl and the total NaHCO3 is reacting with HCl to give you H2CO3. So, as I just told you, we require H2CO3 to change the color of methyl orange from yellow to red. Now, we will stop our titration and we will say that the gram equivalence of HCl has entirely contributed to the sodium bicarbonate total. I mean to say the gram equivalence of sodium bicarbonate which we have from the beginning plus the gram equivalence of NaCO3 obtained from Na2CO3 and nothing but the gram equivalence of Na2CO3 itself. So, when you write this expression weight by equivalent weight plus weight by equivalent weight turning out to be the normality into volume for this thing. I mean to say this time I have taken say it as V1 ml. Now, simplification will fetch you the values of V1 and V2. Now, in the third case only methyl orange is being used. So, from the beginning we have used only methyl orange. That means, you have added HCl NaOH will completely react. No change in the color of Ethyl orange it requires only H2CO3. Next, your Na2CO3 completely reacts, it does not require partial reaction because there is no phenophthalene. You will be getting H2CO3, and also your sodium bicarbonate can contribute to give you H2CO3. I mean to say, your HCl, whichever you have taken here for the methyl orange only, has reacted with all the three. weight upon equivalent weight in every case. This time I will assume that the volume of HCl required is V3. The simplification of these two, these three equations will fetch you the values of V1, V2 and V3. V1 you will get as 34.4 ml, V2 will be 55.8 and V3 is 20.8 ml. In the next question we have a definite amount of barium chloride and HCl 
with unknown normality. 25 ml of this solution was treated with 21.4 ml of 0.1 normal NaOH for complete neutralization. Further, 20 ml of the same was added 50 ml of sodium carbonate 0.1 normal and the precipitate was filtered off and the filtrate reacted with 10.5 ml of 0.08 normal H2SO4 using phenophthalene as indicator. Calculate the strength of barium chloride and HCl in the mixture that is you have been asked to find the weight of each in the mixture. So in this case we have a mixture of BaCl2 and HCl. Now this mixture was first treated with NaOH where we all know that only HCl is going to react with NaOH. So here when I treat this and equate that to the equivalence of HCl that is equal to equivalence of NaOH normality is given as 0.1 and volume is 21.4 in milliliter hence I am dividing with 1000 so that I can get the volume in liters. These are the equivalents of HCl weight upon equivalent weight. So weight of HCl in 20 ml is this many grams. Now if these are the equivalent that are present in 20 ml, you can find out the weight of HCl in 1 liter by multiplying with 1000 by 20 that is 50. Now this many gram per liter are present in the given solution and the weight of HCl in this case is obtained as 3.9 gram. So this is one question which we need to solve and this is one patterning reaction. Now after knowing this, you know that you have once again taken 25 ml uh, sorry 20 ml of this solution which was added Na2CO3. Now this time what you did is you have treated this with Na2CO3 hence I can anticipate this Na2CO3 to react with BaCl2 as well as HCl and BaCl2 was completely eliminated and whichever Na2CO3 is remaining had been titrated by using 0.08 normal 10.5 ml of H2SO4. That is here when you have added this barium chloride and HCl with Na2CO3 you have added in excess. Both the substances have reacted. Your barium carbonate precipitated is eliminated. The precipitate is taken off and the filtrate whichever we have the excess or remaining Na2CO3 was back titrated with H2SO4 using phenophthalene as the indicator and the information provided to you is regarding the H2SO4 0.08 normal and 10.5 milliliter hence you will be writing the gram equivalence of H2SO4 is equal to normality into volume in liter. So these are the gram equivalents of H2SO4 that has reacted with Na2CO3 and nothing but the equivalents of Na2CO3 that are remaining in the solution. Now we know that the Na2CO3 which has been initially added in excess over here the information is provided to you 0.1 normal and 50 milliliter of it. Now you see the equivalents of Na2CO3 which have reacted with the mixture of the two is the difference. Now this difference will give you the equivalence of Na2CO3 which has reacted with barium chloride as well as HCl and as I told you when substances react their gram equivalents need to be taken as same. What I mean to say that the gram equivalents of barium chloride plus I am going to substitute the equivalents of HCl that are present out there and nothing but 0.1 into 21.4 upon 1000 is equal to this much. So therefore I will write this as weight upon equivalent weight 137 plus 71 is the molecular weight upon the n factor of barium chloride in this reaction is the total charge is taken as that much this giving rise to 
the weight of BaCl2 present in 20 ml. Now, after getting weight of BaCl2 present over there, when I multiply this with 50, I'll be getting the weight of BaCl2 that is present in 1 liter of the solution. And the answer for this is 6.1 gram. We have a mixture of calcium carbonate and sodium chloride weighing 3.2 gram was added 100 ml of 1.02 normal of HCl. After the reaction had ceased, the liquid was filtered and the residue was washed and the filtrate was made up to 200 ml. 20 ml of this solution then required 25 ml of 0.2 normal NaOH for complete neutralization. Then you have been asked to find the weight percentage of CaCO3 in the mixture. Look at here that you have a mixture of uh, the calcium carbonate as well as NaCl. This was added HCl and uh, certain data uh, is provided regarding the HCl that is we have taken 1.02 normal and 0.1 liter of HCl had been taken as you all know that this is an alkali is going to react with the HCl hence you will be writing the expression the gram equivalence of acid and base are equal. So now after this after writing this I can see that these are the not the equivalents of HCl which have completely reacted with the calcium carbonate because the information clearly provided to you is that you have taken the excess of HCl because the residual solution which was initially made up to 200 ml was then back titrated I mean to say the 20 ml of this solution was back titrated residual HCl was back titrated with NaOH requiring n by 5 and 20 ml. What I mean to say that the equivalence of NaOH which you have used have been used for the remaining HCl in 20 ml hence to find in 200 ml I have to multiply this with 10. Now these are the equivalents of HCl that are remaining over here that means these are the equivalents which you have taken initially and these are the equivalents of HCl that have remained during the reaction when you subtract these two you will be getting the, the gram equivalents of HCl which have exactly reacted with the calcium carbonate. So here you can see my dear students this is again the question on back titration where you had been given how much of any which you require to exactly find out how much of HCl is remaining after the first reaction because you have taken excess of this. After adding HCl you know that CaCO3 despite completely reacted some HCl remaining and that HCl was found out by using the NaOH and its equivalent. So the gram equivalence I found normality into volume in liter these are the present in 20 ml hence I found out in 200 ml by multiplying with 2 I mean 10 then we have the equivalents of HCl that are remaining this many equivalent HCl we have added initially this many are remaining then the reacted are the difference which I will be writing as weight upon equivalent weight that is molecular weight upon n factor is turning out to be this much. So from here I will be finding out the weight of CaCO3 and the weight percentage of CaCO3 is weight of CaCO3 upon the initial weight of the mixture is given to you as 3.2 gram and the answer for this question is 81.25 percent approximately. We have 2 gram sample of a mixture containing sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate and sodium sulphate which is gently heated till the evolution of CO2 is ceased. The volume of CO2 at 750 millimeter of mercury pressure and 298 Kelvin is measured to be 123.9 ml and 1.5 gram of this same sample required 150 milliliter of 0.1 molar HCl for the complete neutralization then you have to find out the percentage composition of the each component in the mixture. Here you have to understand that you have taken a mixture of sodium carbonate, sodium sulphate and sodium bicarbonate. So here when you have taken the three and when you have heated it gently the carbon dioxide evolved is mainly from sodium bicarbonate as we all know that this is not going to dissociate 
the carbonates of 1a are stable whereas the bicarbonates are unstable hence carbonate do not undergo any decomposition but bicarbonates undergo so when i simplify this i am going to get this now in this the total weight of the sample is 2 gram here if i assume this as x gram x gram this is y gram then this will be 2 minus of x plus y gram and uh, when i divide this with the molecular weight of the substance i'll be getting the gram moles because this is a simple gravimetric question i can use mole concept because i can easily balance this expression for every two moles there is one mole of sodium carbonate which is being produced and one mole of co2 since you have been given information regarding the moles of co2 it is better to convert the moles of na to nhco3 into the moles of co2 now for every two moles you are getting one mole of carbon dioxide for every this much i can expect the formation of half of it these are the number of moles of co2 which are formed half of this entire value now which is equal to these are nothing but the number of moles of carbon dioxide which is equal to i am using the ideal gas equation here because i have been provided with pressure volume and temperature pressure is 750 by 760 in atmosphere into volume is 123.9 that is 0 0.124 liter divided by rt the temperature over there is mentioned as 298 now these are the number of moles of CO2 that means you have got one equation in terms of x and y one equation two unknowns are not sufficient then you have to see that 1.5 gram of the same sample required 150 ml of the HCl for complete neutralization now when you are using HCl we all know that sodium bicarbonate as well as sodium carbonate are going to react completely with HCl these are the concerned reactions So what I mean to say that the gram equivalence of HCl which you have used totally that is 0.1 normality into volume in litre are going to be used for Na2CO3 as well as NaHCO3. So I am writing this as weight of Na2CO3 that is weight of Na2CO3 this in A2CO3 weight you have taken in x gram x is per 2 for 2 grams of the sample you have taken x grams of Na2CO3 here 1.5 gram of the sample was being taken and if it is for 2 gram if it is x 1.5 it will be 1.5 into x divided by 2 this is the weight of Na2CO3 which is present in 1.5 grams divided by equivalent weight of Na2CO3 that is molecular weight divided by this time the n factor is 2 because the complete utilize is taking place plus the weight of sodium bicarbonate you can see here that it is 1.5 by 2 times of uh, 2 minus of x plus y divided by 84 by 1 because it has taken only one HCl is equal to 0 0.015 now we got one more equation in terms of x and y you got two equations and two unknowns to be obtained they are x and y and after that you'll be finding out the weight percentage of uh, NaCO3 as somewhere around 42 percent and the percentage of Na2CO3 somewhere around 26.5 percent so this is the answer for your question in stoichiometry